If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, we continue on our streak of discussing things that are uh, hey. controversial. Yeah, let's just piss everybody we off. We actually talked about uh, God <laughs> and uh, oh, us. the universe and consciousness and cool stuff with the brain. Um, and that's in the beginning, about 28 minutes of our initial bullshitting. Before we get to the questions, and the questions were... Is there a study demonstrating growth hormone release during sauna sessions? There is. Uh, does it affect growth hormone in positive ways? And is a sauna something that can help you get Don't you give them the answer. to your goal faster? You have to listen to find That's out. That's it. We talk about how someone has really tight traps. Should they exercise them? In other words, if you have a tight muscle, is it smart to exercise them or should you not work them out for fear of making them tighter? Again, you want the answer? Mm. Listen to the episode. We talk about our opinion on the most important things in starting a business. We have a little bit of a debate over it, in fact. As usual, I am correct. Then we talk about <laughs> yeah. why... You'll have to listen to really that. find out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. we find, then we talk about why someone may be attracting all the creepy guys in the gym. Is it her fault? Is she doing something? Or is it... According to Adam, it is. Yeah. Or is it the fact that most guys are creepy? Who knows? Yeah. But you'll have to find out uh, in this episode of Mind Pump. Also, don't forget this month we have our summer starter pack. It includes MAPS Anabolic, our foundational workout program. It also includes MAPS Prime, which has a self assessment tool. It actually helps you correct muscle imbalances and teaches you how to prime your workouts. We also included a nutritional component. You have the nutrition guide, fasting guide combo. And lastly, we threw in access to our private forum yes. so that you can get the support that you need. Along Get your that accountability journey, we took all of these things, we packaged them together in our starter pack, and we discounted them by over fifty percent off. And it's this month only. Check it out, mindpumpmedia.com. I think we should change the name of our show. What are we going to name it now? Instead of mind pump, mind blown. No. We will blow your lower mind. Huh? Uh, <laughs> What's the lower mind? It's the it's where you think. The other where you really think, yeah, exactly. You want to know uh, what I this is so there's a few times in my <laughs> life, there's a few times in my life. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I, I miss you so much. <laughs> a couple of bullies, there's a couple of times in my life where somebody will make a big deal about something with me, and then as if the universe was on my side, which, would it, which it usually is, just present to them an opportunity for me to mm. demonstrate to them that they were idiots. Yeah. And well, you that two believers has that really happened. Empowers your <laughs> that has stance. happened recently. Yeah. Okay. So when we started Mind Pump back, it's been what, almost about two and a half years, right? Uh, it was a little, it was like a, for a little while there, you guys were making fun of my headphones, talking shit about my, oh God, about my, <laughs> oh, this my guy. cheaper like, headphones. Oh, I'm going to come in in school. Talk about my here cheaper we go. headphones. Well, here we go. Here we are, two and a half years later. <laughs> and you still got these guys dork. That have spent a million dollars at least uh, on headphones. I know because they keep fucking breaking. And I told them when they first bought them, I'm like, you spent way too much money on a pair of fucking headphones. Who cares? They're like, no, it's fucking go- the quality. They last forever. Broken, broken. Well, here's, mine still. Here's work. where they get you. Let me tell you where Bose mm. or where Beats gets you. Okay. And because I'm looking at your headphones well, right now, and you take- <laughs> Taylor has taken pictures of us, and I'm happy with those. I don't Bro, know about no. you. Well, no, you, no, are you happy yeah, with yeah, the yeah, duct yeah, tape yeah. up and no, down listen, your head right listen, now? Listen, listen, uh, well, no. Know. Let me finish what I'm, I'm explaining here okay. because I've there's been times where I've used your headphones and I've used Doug's other really nice headphones, and once you've heard the yeah. the sound quality and beats is fucking good. There's a good tone. It's in there. fucking very good. It sound yeah. it's huh. and. <laughs> There's not, and a lot. Of, I know people love to debate this. Like, and I, oh, I remember. Yeah. Okay, so how much does a new pair of Beats cost? They're like four hundred bucks. 400 Fuck bucks. me. See, yeah. my headphones are hundred bucks. Yeah. So, but they sound like they're hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, and they, hear, they look hear, like they're. 100. I hear you guys just. Yeah, fine. you you hear fine, and yeah. that's okay though. So here's the thing, and like, and I know that, I'm, and I'm totally this. This is why my girl calls me bougie because it's like, <laughs> I I'll naturally gravitate <laughs> to things that are more expensive, but most of the time, more expensive things are made nicer. 
That's it's true. Just, and it's not to say that the beats aren't overpriced. I'm not saying that they're not, of course, you know, but when you put a really good fucking product together, you can get away with charging murder for it because it is fucking really good. Yeah. Murder. You can, however, they break it's, yeah. it, all the well, time. Here's the thing. It's a really good product. It looks awesome, but the materials they use are dog shit. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's I'm just thinking, all plastic what components. About, maybe this is what's happening. Beach should send me some free ones because I'm on I'm on my you fourth know, pair. I, exactly. Fuck me. I'm on my fourth maybe pair. Maybe it's this is what's happening. Yeah. Maybe it's the way you guys we are need either, to sponsor us because well, we I'm need saying, to keep this going. Because it happened with both you guys. And I'm wondering if you guys, the technique you use to put the headphones on may be wrong. Or is. your heads are massive. There's yeah. a technique. Or something. A head. You might be right. Is there a technique? Because yeah. I didn't get the yeah. memo. I'm wondering if you guys just like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, you're too <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Slamming on my head. Yeah, it might be too aggressive. I don't know. I mean, I know when you wear a hat, Justin, you have it yeah. on the last buckle. That's true. Because you have. I'm, I'm popping seams. You have a wide. Well, my wide big. I've got a cranium. You know, I'm, it's like that cranium that's like an in-between size, too. So I'm like, either I go big and look like dopey, or I go small and I <laughs> and you get fucking a compress my whole yeah. head. Yeah. 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 I don't have a bit. See, my my skull is actually not massive. Uh, it's more yeah, like. very linear. It's, it's like, like computer like, chips. Like, As they get more advanced, yeah. they get smaller. It's like your whole head is a beak. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I have to take this. It's a big beat. You guys well, literally make fun of me I, for like a year well, about crazy. it. Yeah, I think it's I have cool because you're, you're very, very pointy. Small head. Yeah, Do you really? Yeah, you're yeah very I have a really pointy small head. And the way you talk is... Yeah. You know, you know, like, <laughs> like junior junior ball caps like fit yeah. my head better than like adult ball I caps. I bet my head's smaller than yours. It might be. I don't know if I want to. So? I don't know if I want to. I don't yeah, know if I want to fight you hat, in this argument. <laughs> you're kind of long, though. You know what I mean? Like you might have to have a bigger size because yeah, you're. At the length is big. Yeah, the, that's what I'm saying. Like you might have to jump up. It's, a size you know what's us. funny? You would think I was fast at, at running or swimming because of the shape of my head. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like just you would cutting through the water. You would think that yeah. that would make me just fast. spearheading your way through everything. But in fact, uh, it just goes to show you it's big rocks, right? That's like a wing on a, 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 a on the Civic. Like, yeah. That really doesn't make a difference because I don't propel myself quickly. Yeah, I see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I see. Uh, dude. Did you guys see the deep discussion uh, I had on the forum yesterday? No, you were about to say something about it. So finish what you were starting. So to say. I love our forum because sometimes when I have time, I can get. I always have time. I always make time. It's it's a priority to make time to get on there and answer questions and talk to people. Yeah. But sometimes when I have extra time, I get on there and I can have these like really deep, interesting discussions with people. And we have some really smart people on the forum, like. Yeah. There's a couple. You gravitate to the extra controversial ones. I've oh, noticed. well, this so this wasn't a yeah. contra. This wasn't like, really. Ooh. Con- <laughs> Actually, it could be controversial. Oh, yeah. uh, but no, there was this study that came out uh, that was just published, I think, yesterday, and that scientists. And by the way, if you're in the science world, especially in neurobiology neurobiolo- or even in human consciousness, like this was fucking insane. Like this is one of those groundbreaking Ooh, studies us with the knowledge because the problem with the brain is that um we don't we we have zero idea of how it works yeah because all so, the, all they really show is like the area is lighting up we, it's have, like we, we have, have we have these general it's like generally oh we this is kind of we think it's firing happening. sequence but yeah. we have we literally have no idea like we think of yeah. computing like the way a computer works but the brain doesn't computer. it doesn't work that way which is why there's a there's still a debate as to whether or not we'll even create artificial intelligence as quickly as we think we will because we don't know what that means necessarily and maybe it has to do with how the brain works. So anyway, we have had we have no idea. Well, it gets even fucking weirder because mm. they this was just published. Multidimensional universe was detected in brain networks. In other words, they use a sophistic, sophisticated type of mathematics what? in a way. Yeah, this is interesting. In a, with neuroscience – and they uncovered a universe of multidimensional geometrical structures and spaces within the networks of the brain. So in other words, theoretically, the brain could be operating in like 11 different dimensions and in, 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 in creating these structures and connecting these structures <laughs> as you're producing thoughts. This is like... Of course it's like, got debate because I would laugh at this. Yeah. Well, no, well, hold on a second. Theoretically, how do you get that? What do you mean? It doesn't even make sense. What doesn't make like, sense? Like it, it's already an area that we're uncertain about. So then to talk about some like that we, we well, no, dove so, into something and found that it's it it may mean it, the brain is functioning in multi dimensions. Like how are you able to measure that when you're so it make, so that makes no sense to so me. So I'm not a uh, I'm de- I'm not a scientist, but I have had people who I respect try to explain it to me because I've asked them that question because 
there's lots of theories about like forget about the brain like that there's this multiverse and that there's more than just the dimen- the dimensions that we live in and it's not really that dis- disputed like scientists will say oh there's for sure dimensions that exist that we don't perceive like the dimension of time and the way we perceive it may be wrong and there's other dimensions that we don't even perceive that are out there and some scientists have said there's as many as like more than a dozen or 70 or something like that so so and it's all figured through math. So the, the the universe up until now can be explained through mathematical calculations, and it's been extremely effective up until now. Like we've been able to mathematically calculate what uh, the kind of power and energy that's stored within an atom before we ever split the atom and created nuclear energy or the nuclear bomb, for example. We our mathematics help us create things like MRI machines, which work, believe it or not, in a quantum in a quantum level. Things that we can't really observe or see but we know because of math and so with this math they've basically figured out that the brain works in all these other dimensions and that's multi-dimensional and they tried to illustrate it they had a computer try yeah, to illustrate but it, but we can't perceive it well how could that could it be getting mixed up with memories and and no that's the thing is that that's not that's the point the point of this study and it was like it was published like all over the place in all the science journals like this is a big deal and what they're saying is, is that because before this, scientists have observed quantum phenomena within the brain as well. And if you don't know a lot, if you don't know about quantum physics, things on the quantum level uh, operate in such a strange way to where like they exist as you perceive it, and then it doesn't exist. Particles are in will appear and disappear at the same time, or or, or will be in two different places at one time. It's just weird shit. And they've observed some type of this, some of this phenomena in the brain. And now they're showing that the brain works in uh, in ways that are far more complex that we could have ever imagined, which opens up such incredible possibilities in terms of how consciousness is coming about or how the brain thinks and processes things. Mm. It's really fucking fascinating. So, so you any- think you're traveling while you're, you're taking some kind of psychedelics when in fact you're just, you know, experiencing other parts of the brain. That who knows? Like that that's been a theory for a long time. Like who knows, right? But it's just really fucking cool to discover stuff like this because it brings us a little closer to understanding the brain. So anyway, I posted this on the forum and someone said, I think this is in 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 a nutshell, they said basically this is evidence of intelligent design. So then it was like a little discussion about whether or not you know, our we we evolution, uh, you know, is what created us, and it was the it was chance, right? The 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 random chance that you know self replicating DNA. I thought we already life. proved that it, it the the probability of random chance is so crazy. I mean, this was like that's when, a theory. That's one theory, right? That one theory is that it, it's the equivalent to like having a tornado go through a junkyard and assembling an airplane. But on the other side of it, with enough time. And with enough uh, opportunity, at some point, all possible random, you know, combinations of things are possible. Um, and and so this is just this is just like a little debate we went back and forth and had a nice discussion about. And I'm always torn on this, so it was a really cool discussion. It got really really deep. And uh, but anyway, really really cool uh, article. And if you're kind of into science, you've probably already seen it, but if not, you can just Google this. When was it released? Uh, yesterday. It just, oh. it just came out yesterday, I think. And I'm looking at the science daily, um, article and the title of it was multidimensional universe in brain networks, uh, science news. And you can hmm. read all about it. Really fucking cool. Theoretical shit, man. math. Huh? So was the, what, how did the discussion go on the forum though? You said it turned into a long thread. Yeah. Did it so into a debate over it. Well, or? so I'm always torn over this, right? Or was someone just saying like, I am I'm like, come on, that's just a well, fucking- so I'm torn because on one hand, I think that there is intelligent design. Now my interpretation of intelligent design is not the same as someone who's, um, you know, either Christian or Jewish or whatever. They may believe in a God. Um, whereas I think something designed this and it could be, other artificial intelligent and we could be our own artificial intelligence. You know, when I look at the odds and probability uh, of life in the universe and when you consider the age of the universe and the size of the universe, it's incomprehensible how big it is and how old it is, right? So at some point, somewhere in the universe, it's highly probable that art, that, that life, intelligent life existed somewhere. And the desire of intelligent life seems to be based on our, on our own example to create its own intelligent life, like we're doing now, like we're working with computers and we're driving hard to create 
artificial intelligence that is self-aware. And it's totally plausible that we that's would- already happened. It, well, it's- right. we, that, Maybe. That it's totally yeah. plausible that that's already that, that has The odds are that that's already happened. And that- it, Now, take it a step further- would that untar- intelligent life? It was if it was within a program where it was una- unaware that it was in a program. First of all, it would consider itself real life. It would then evolve and grow because it's intelligent, and then its goal would be to make artificial intelligence. So, not only is the probability that it might have happened in the universe, but it, if that did happen, yeah. we could be so many layers deep well, into there's always a driving factor to create. Right, and so I'm like, I think something might have designed us, and I don't know what that is. But that always goes back to, well, what started the first thing? And then the discussion is, well, was there a first? Was there a beginning? Well, so I'll tell it you just so, got real fucking It reminds me of that Perry Marshall like, uh, conversation Episode we had. We had. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've, I have found it personally. So I, I haven't shared this on the podcast, and I don't know how much I even like sharing it right now, but I think since we're on this topic, I will, is I've, I've personally liked that. I was somebody who grew up very religious, right? So I grew up, and I've shared this in the podcast before, I think I've been belonged to nine different denominations at one point in my life. So I've, I've seen a lot like uh, on the religious side. You're like the mixed martial artist of religion. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of, for sure. Uh, so, uh, which gives me a really good bullshit detector too. So yeah. I I grew up a lot around that. So and, Baptist belt. And <laughs> I remember growing up through as a young kid and, uh, that I would also too, you would you would meet these really intelligent like PhDs and stuff. And a lot of the times, uh, or not most of the time, they, you know, were very agnostic or atheist, mm-hmm. you know, and he, r- very rarely did you ever meet one that was, you know, Christian or a believer or a believed in a higher power or whatever the case may be. And since we've had the opportunity to interview a lot of really, really intelligent minds and PhDs and authors and uh, really, really respectable people, this is one of the questions I always kind of ask them off air or talk to them. I'm always intrigued on their their thoughts. And it's been very, very surprising to me to see how many PhDs I see that admitted that they were agnostic or atheist before and now a believer in something bigger and greater because the more that science keeps coming out, where it's starting to look like it's too perfect, well, it's, I too, just, it's I, too immaculate for uh, for it to just have randomly. It could be, and that's part of the argument. But I think, and I don't like talking about this stuff. That's why I avoid it on the yeah. podcast because I know it always, it always, there's always somebody who's going to get can't. Hand, they're not ready to even discuss stuff like this because. Oh, it, it definitely because, should be talked about. That's oh, I for agree, sure. I agree, like, but it's it's the third rail, right? Yeah. I mean, we're we're getting in the third rail there because then if I if I speculate anything like that, then oh, oh you know, you're always going to have your people that are bigots about things. But I, I mean, I love you know, and this is a shit that I love to talk about off air when I get a chance to meet brilliant minds yeah. that have done well, way more research. You, in these yeah. areas than I have, it's fascinating to me to see how many of them are are, are have flip flopped in the last ten yeah. to twenty years. Why can't we work through ideas and thoughts? You know, like why do they have to stay rigid and in like you you feel like you have the understanding? I I don't understand that at all. Like I I want to know more. Like if 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 there's a valid point to it, like you know let's let's keep let's keep diving deeper into that thought process. Yeah. You know, and like explore it. And, you know, like I had the same kind of background as Adam. And so it's like, for me, it's, it's not just like, yeah, that's it. And that's the end of the story. Like, no, dude, I, like, I love understanding how things work and interact. And like the more things we unravel, the more questions come, come up. So let's talk about it. Well, I mean, look here for me, it's not, it, it turns into, it ends up turning into like a religion versus type discussion. For me, it's not like, I don't see it as a religion versus not religion do I. at all. Because to be honest with you, <clears throat> if somebody is really religious and really believes in, you know, they're, you know, if someone's Christian and they're really Christian, they really believe it. And, and they're nice people, of course. And, and all that stuff. Uh, my my interpretation of what they're saying may be, for me personally, we're kind of saying similar stuff. Is just you're using different words. Like mm. I may think something intelligent created us. You may refer to it as God. I may refer to it as, you know, in my language, is this, you know, what I just talked about earlier, right? Right. So, and, and and really, who's to say you're not both right? And, and at the same time, that's, like, that's how I feel. And like. not only that, but it's. It's a it's a journey. Spirituality is 100% a journey. I'll give you guys an example. My kids go to Catholic school. So people hear me and they think sometimes I'm atheist or I'm anti-religion, which is which is not true. My kids actually go to Catholic school and this is because partly because their mother is Catholic and 
their grandparents are. And I like the school. And it's a really, really good education. And the parents are all awesome there. And I know what I believe, right? But uh, I'm not going to impose, you know, though, like my rigid beliefs or my understanding on my kids because I, I feel like they have to get there. They have to get there themselves. Yeah. I, I believe they should be exposed. Mm-hmm. And, and and what I'm going to raise them to to understand through example is to be, you know, nice to people, treat people yeah, the way the you want morals. to be treated. It's, all, it's you know the fabric of yeah. That, and that I'm also open. Yeah. Like if they want to go to church, that's great. If they want to question church, that's fine too. Yeah. I've actually had this discussion with my son. My son is very much like me. He thinks a lot like I do. And he's asked me. He asked me when he was five years old. No joke. Five years old. He sat down with me. And my kids always had these really deep, like too old for his age type conversations with me which kind of freaks me out but we were sitting there and he's like he goes papa he goes is is jesus a myth this is my five-year-old was my five so i'm like oh fuck how the hell do i (laughs) that kind of question (laughs) that's a loaded question so i said well son i'm not ready to answer uh, that yet (laughs) so i said to him i said well do you know what is a myth and he goes it's like a made-up story and i said yeah okay so you you're asking me if jesus is a made-up story and he says yeah yeah is it is it made up and i said well, what do you think? And he's looking around and, you know, he's kind of thinking. And I said, you know, I said, this is, this is something that only you can answer. Nobody can answer for you. So I may have my own opinion, but it's not going to matter. What matters is what's your opinion on it. And we had this really good, for a five-year-old, we had a great conversation about it. Yeah, it's pretty and, deep. And here's the bottom line. I know too many people who are religious and hammer their kids with it. And when kids rebel, they end up rebelling against their parents anyway. Yeah. And I also seen the flip. I actually have some friends mm-hmm. who are hardcore atheists, like h- nice people, hardcore atheists, which is also fine. Yeah. And their kids, both their kids re- like totally rebelled against their parents and are like super religious. And the parents are all like stressed out about it. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, <laughs> like, like just let your kid, I mean, that's my belief at least. But anyway, it was a good well, discussion because it's, for me, um, I love going back and forth. I yeah. love taking one side and trying to understand it, and then I love going to the other side and mm-hmm. trying to understand it. And hopefully, at the end of the day, you know, I'll solidify kind of what I what I believe. But you know, there are things I know for sure. Like I know right. we should treat people nicely. I know we shouldn't steal from people, hurt from people. It's important stuff, right? Right. There's some go tos. I think for the most part, people are just like exploring like their purpose, and like like we're, we're all trying to kind of collectively get ideas and figure out like why we're even here and like it it's such a deep thing to think about that like i don't feel like any like people don't think about enough no. you know like like why are you even like alive like why are we even here oh. so it, it, it's it's a hard thing because you could dismiss it and we could just live like every day like it's just like this people think, protocol people you know? think sitting there and thinking that is a waste of time but it's not like the ancient philosophers of greece that's what they did yeah and they came That's up. Why I love philosophy. They came I up with the. They came up with the concept of the atom, way back uh, then. Before I mean, you know, before we had microscopes. Before they came up with the concept of germs, because they were sitting around crazy and 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 thinking about these things. Here's my one of my favorite 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 theories, and it resonates with me for some reason. I think it's really cool, and I talked about this on the forum. And in, 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 when we're talking about the brain in particular. The current model of belief is that the brain houses the consciousness and basically is what creates who you are, right? Creates all these different things. But then there's this alternate theory, which is really, really cool, which kind of resonates with me. And that is that the brain is a highly sophisticated receiver of information, receiver and processor of information. Now, on a literal basis, on li- literal terms... Like it's a radio, like receiving well, signals? Yeah, well, on, on li- for literal terms, that is what it is. Like, we are perceiving things, we're touching things, we're seeing things, whatever, and the brain is re- getting all this information and, cre- and, and processing it and telling us what we see and what we feel and all that stuff. So that is literally true, but to take it a step further, what if the brain was receiving your consciousness and it's just processing it and when you die it's like smashing a radio like the radio's broken you'll no longer hear that song Mm. but that song is still being it's still out there it's still being broadcast Mm -hmm. out in the universe Mm. and so that's something that i you know that's a theory that i heard a while ago that really tripped me out and it feels it feels right which means nothing to the (laughs) scientists we're listening right now (laughs) 
<laughs> I feel it in my balls. I, you I, know, I piss people off, dude, because I could be such a like like a logical dick, and then I can sound so like spiritual. And I love weird. it, man. That, that keeps well, them I, guessing. Well, I think that's important, though. I think this is what uh, I think. Whenever you become, you can be dogmatic about science too. Yeah, like totally. I, I, that's, and I think that you're an idiot if you think otherwise. I'm sorry. It's like you people get so hell bent and and again their boxes, their their, their beliefs, and they're, they they come so attached to it that. I mean, God, that's not where that's. I, who, I could be completely wrong with my thoughts and my theories on things too. Does it doesn't mean I don't want to discuss it and hear somebody else's thoughts that could be totally opposing mine? Well, like, what, it makes me. In fact, I like hearing dude, stuff. You know, it's really funny. Like you guys bring this up. Like so, like Sal, you always talk about like you know checking out what what other people think that you think are stupid. Yeah. You know. So I went down that rabbit hole and I watched the whole YouTube series about like the flat earth theory and all that. Oh, yeah. I like had to, you know, cuz I've been like cuz like why are trying to idiots? rationalize this in my brain and I'm like why the fuck would people believe this? You know, and like I was going through and it's like you know, they do the whole like absolutes, you know, yeah. like this is what happened and this is, you know, why they dismissed this idea. And NASA is not, is, is providing all like photoshopped images and like, really? Like NASA's <laughs> going to take all that time to like construct <laughs> all these videos, all these things. Like I was just getting more and more infuriated but it, as but, I was watching it. But, but now I, you know it. Yeah, but now fine. I know it. And now I know like they literally think like we're the center of the universe. Like. <laughs> Everything else is spinning around us. I was like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Oh, yeah. I love this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It was crazy. You have to do it. The one yeah. thing that's that people have an issue with when it comes to science, this is where I think the dogma comes from, is when they use current knowledge of science and they believe like wholeheartedly like that's it right there and there's nothing else, rather than saying, which is really, to be honest with you, real science is, ne- is never that. Real science is the evidence demonstrates this, we don't know this other stuff, and we're going to continue to try and prove ourselves wrong. We're going to continue to test what we think is right. That's real science. But when people get dogmatic, it becomes this like, you know, uh, n- there's no way these th- like. Th- and by the way, this was science. These are totally safe. Take these products. They'll never bother you. You'll be absolutely fine. It's approved. The science is settled. And then you know, 20 years later, we're like, oh, we have a microbiome that is super connected to our entire bodies. And if we fuck with it, it'll probably mess with our health and the way we think. And the only reason why we're, you know, that, that, that the dogma is what prevented that because what they could have said was so far, what we've tested, this is what we see, right? but we don't know what we don't know. And let's give it some more time or, you know, rather than saying, nope, perfectly safe, here you go. And that's where some of the dogma comes from. And I think, uh, that's the problem that you'll see with people who claim to be, super scientific because the funny thing is when you talk to actual scientists and actual people who do research they they they're not super dogmatic everyone i've ever talked to like when we had dom diagostino on and he's talking about his research yeah but i feel like that's now i feel like that's different i think mm-hmm. 10 years ago 15 years ago i don't know maybe if you not remember, so much yeah i don't know if you remember talking to brains like that back then but you know i had clients that were tied into nasa and that were really? all yeah and they never talked like that so that's what i found very fascinating was a lot of the conversations I've had with some of these guys now, like these Perry Marshalls, the Doms, assistant, th- people like that, I, I'm fascinated to hear them talk about how they were agnostic or atheist before, and then now they believe there's something, yeah. something other. But I, and I love to hear how they explain it because it's not like in this. I was, I was, I was atheist for a second there for sure, hardcore, yeah, yeah. hardcore atheist for a second, and then I got into, uh, I just for fun, I started try- learning more about quantum physics. And then I remember thinking how some of that sounded a lot like spirituality. Like mm-hmm. you're saying everything's do you know connected like this in another realm. And then you're and but that sounds a lot yeah. like this. And I was like, mm. whoa, there's a lot of parallels there. It didn't make me super spiritual, but it made me agnostic. It made me get away from atheism and say, well, I don't I don't know for sure. Yeah. And all this stuff is kind of cool. So I I would prefer to just be agnostic, and that might keep my mind a little more open to looking at different things. And I'm still kind of there. I just think I just think it's fucking rad. When science, you know, and the reason why I like it when science shows us stuff more than when a mystic or a, a, a monk or a whatever comes and tells me is because I under science has like measurables and it's more objective and I can just, I can be, I can connect to it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can say, oh shit, you guys did the math and figured this out. Or, oh, you took a picture of this MRI and it shows this. Like to me, that's m- more resonating than someone saying, 
you know, this is what we've believed for so long. This is what we feel. There may be truth in that also, but I have a tough time sometimes connecting to that. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, I agree. Yeah. Very cool. Bring on the logical bird. Today's Quaw is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Quaw. The eagle has landed. Quaw. Our first question is from Elizabeth Marie Fit. I heard about a study recently showing growth hormone releasing during sauna sessions. Any truth to this? So these, stu- so temperature contrast training, uh, or I forgot how Rhonda Patrick calls it. I think that's what she calls it, hmm. is becoming a big thing. Yeah, she and, always talks about heat shock and, and cold shock proteins or whatever, right? Yeah, it, it's interesting. It, well, Wim Hof, dude, I mean, that's it, everything he's done is based off of that, right? I mean, that's his. It's 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 a big thing now. What I find fascinating about it because I remember as trainers years ago, people would always ask me about the sauna in the steam room. They would always ask me like, "Does it help me burn fat? Will it help me burn mu- build muscle? Is it good for me?" And I remember my answer was always like, well, if it feels good, do it, but it doesn't help you lose weight. God, I'm it just glad, makes I'm you glad you're going this direction right yeah. now. I feel like this is something that we should have talked about a long time ago and how we never talked about this before. Yeah. The sauna is such a, it, it's another one of those things in fitness that we we sold it the wrong way yes. for so long. Yes. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. It, If you were to go back and think of like talking about it in the past, the way you sold it on people and why they should do it, we, we kind of did a bad job of that. Yeah. We did. And I remember saying that, like, like, no, it doesn't help. It just makes you sweat water out. Mm-hmm. If you feel good doing it, doing it. Like there's no real benefit to it other than you feel, it feels good. And that was what we were taught. And that's what I thought. And that's what Western uh, science uh, would have shown. Now, now we have science actually showing uh, incredible benefits from co- temperature contrast type training. We're showing that it actually um, amplifies the adaptation that you get to exercise. So there's actually some studies that have compared people who use a sauna versus those who don't, who do the same workout. And the people that use the sauna like can train till exhaustion like X amount percent longer. I forgot what the number was. The number was. I'll see if I can pull it up here. Yeah. But it was a pretty significant amount. Um, it also uh, it, it makes a lot of sense from an adaptation perspective. Just being in a more like hot environment. So when you're exposed to that and you're going through your rigorous activity, all of a sudden the temperature maybe it's really hot outside. Like you're gonna endure a lot better than person that hasn't been exposed. Well, this is the that same part sy- of it. This isn't this the same system too. You're this is gonna boost your immune system. So yeah. when you when you do this temperature contrast, and this really hit home for me after I started to dive into Wim Hof. Like so when we were talking about when we had them into our facility and I first we first heard him on Joe Rogan I was like what is this bullshit like this is crazy right I thought it was kind of gimmicky at first and that forced me to kind of dive deeper and deeper and it just it makes total sense I remember and I know this is all anecdotal right here but I remember when I started to apply it after I after I started to read up and I thought oh this makes a ton of sense I tell you what man uh, like definitely I have been healthier than I've been in a long time as far as fighting off just like the common colds. And even if I do mm-hmm. like, so now like, so when I start to feel a cold coming on, like I'll, it, I'll intentionally train this. I'll start doing hot and cold, the hot, cold thing like that. And, and start, yeah. try and strengthen me as, as quick as I can. Well, before. just tapping into the autonomic system, right. And like really being able to like, like slow down and, and and communicate to your body on that level, I think is such a powerful thing. Well, there's two things to consider. First off, the the body's ability, the, you, your body actually has a an ability to adapt uh, and get better at this. And what I mean by that is, if you go in a sauna for 20 minutes and then you go in a you know freezing cold shower or dip after or whatever. Yeah, as you train that consistently, you'll find your tolerance for it to get better and right. you'll be able to do it longer and longer or colder and hotter mm-hmm. and all those different things. Your body actually learns to adapt. Now, you have to ask yourself, what is happening to my body that's allowing it to adapt? Well, it's, th- it's literally getting stronger. Mm-hmm. And anytime your body adapts, to, so far, mm-hmm. by the way, this is, this is on all cases, as your body adapts to a stress by getting tougher, if you will, yeah. 
it gets better. Whether it's interesting to think about, like yeah. instead of just the muscular, you know, system, like like all these other systems are getting stronger by, you know, introducing them into these other environments. Absolutely, your well, body is getting tougher. And we yeah. we all know somebody too who has made a statement that you know if they get sick. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> as he coughs. Yeah, right. As I, as I, as I, so as somebody gets, uh, they'll they'll mention or they'll bring up like, oh, anytime the weather like changes drastically, I get sick. Yeah. And it, I, I know. I have you heard that? I've heard that multiple times before. Yeah, anecdotally, like, like I've seen right. Yeah, exactly. People around I've, me all the time. Lots of too, yeah. right. Where even myself, I was yeah. somebody who's like that. Who I would notice like if it was a uh, you know we had this summer day. This happens in California a lot too, where we'll have like a nice a beautiful eighty degree day, and then all of a sudden it'll turn around and feel like winter the next day. And that whenever I have that, a lot of the times I would get sick. Interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. I never hmm. I never thought of that uh, that particular point. But I mean, along those lines. The human body did evolve dealing with temperature contrast. We did not have air conditioning. We didn't have heating. Yeah. We didn't live in, you know, super insulated. Yeah, this know, is just buildings. a theory of mine. I don't have yeah. proof of that. That's no, what, no, no. I mean, I, I, I do know that I've had a lot of cases, though, personally and with clients that have shared that with me. That and then that to me, that was like light bulb went off. Like that just makes sense. Well, to me. I mean, it, like I said, like I'm, as I'm saying, like y- y- our bodies evolved dealing with this, and we baby the hell out of our body to where. Think about it. The temperature doesn't really change for you for the most part at no, all. No, not at all. It's always comfortable, right? Whether yeah. you live in, in cold weather, hot weather, You run wherever. the AC or the heater in your car yeah. as soon as you get into it. Yeah, it's like 72 it's- degrees all the time. Yeah. And like anything that we do that where we make ourselves super comfortable, like we lower our activity level or we- Yeah, we eat, sit down a whole lot. Like all yeah. of that shit is bad for us. So there's there's that part of it. Plus there's the part of it that, you know- It's sauna. like atrophy to the, to the yes, environment. It does because yeah. like I said, I look, I do it pretty consistently when I can. I yeah. go every day. But then I have, sometimes I have my kids for like a week, right? So I can't go in the morning because I have to drop them off at school and then come straight here to, to work. So I don't have the time to go over there and do the, the sauna and stuff. And I know, I notice when I take a week off and I go back, my tolerance is lower. It's like I took a week off of the gym. Mm-hmm. It's like not working out, going to lift and be like, oh, I'm not as strong. Mm-hmm. Totally. And dude. so I, I mean, 100% there's adaptations happening. Cultures have been doing this forever. Mm-hmm. And anytime you find something that's ingrained in a culture, there's some kind of benefit to it. That's why they put it in the right. culture. It wouldn't have been happening for hundreds of years. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, dude, it's it's deep in like, like certain Nordic uh, yeah. countries. Very, very deep that they go in the sauna and jump in the snow. And they have kids do this shit. And, and I think in Russia, even in some schools, little kids will go out in their underwear and they'll do like a like a snow bath, they call it. And it's just part of their schooling. And it's to boost and strengthen their immune system. But but the science is, is now catching up. We can see now that there's certain things that are happening. Hmm. There was one study, I just found it, where they had uh, participants do a 30-minute sauna session twice a week for three weeks after their workouts and they increased their time it took to run until exhaustion by more than 30 percent that's a huge wow. huge boost um, there's also a huge growth hormone release which is the original question is there a growth hormone release during sauna absolutely absolutely when you're in the sauna you actually get a several fold boost in growth hormone and it's significant now does this necessarily mean it's gonna build more muscle and do all that kind of, I don't know if it's that, I don't think it's that dramatic, right? You'd have to be, have high growth hormone all the time. Is it time. the same response as like after being fasted? Fasting is huge. By the way, I just read a study that showed that fasting for, I think three days, pure water fast, boosted growth hormone on average by over a thousand percent. Right. Like, like a ridiculous amount, right? Wow. Yes. Ridic- and the reason why I, I, I'm talking about that is that study, they're, they're trying to explain why fasting every other day kept more muscle than just regular calorie mm. restriction you know when they did a versus it, it maintained more muscle See, this maybe is it's interesting because we talked about like nutrition timing and all that and i remember that being the contrast of like you know what benefits you would get either i go fasted like after or i i you know load up for that window the anabolic window or whatever uh and we kind of deduced it down to well are you doing really high intensity activity the following day yeah. and if so you would be you know more likely to do be a fed and get that kind of a, a benefit versus like i'm going to get the growth hormone benefit yeah. by staying fast it's 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 i mean it's kind of speculation up, uh, at this point but what we do know is that saunas now have demonstrated uh sauna and cold have demonstrated health prop uh, health benefits 
they seem to imp- uh, increase adaptations to exercise. So uh, you're going to get stronger faster or, or get better. Does, you know what that also, can you guys think of uh, what that reminds me of too, that I've never thought about this until right now, this moment, uh, your clients that had jobs like, uh, like carpenters outdoor that had like, like had to get up at five or four o'clock in the morning and work out and like all different weather mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Ne- did hardly ever got sick, and if they did get sick, no. it was not that bad at all. It, and plus, it'd be detrimental to their business. So it's like the mindset of it, you know, going in. Like they're they're pretty hardcore. Like I'm thinking about it right now. Like I that was a common theme that I would hear from then, and that would be anybody anybody that would have to work go outside and work in these environments that were extremely cold, hot, like all these different temperature contrasts. I I, I, I tell you what I versus hmm. somebody who's in a building all day long, like an office building, sitting around. Well, all day. It, there's there could be a lot of explanations. Of course. Because, because it get, could be that you're, you're closer, you're, clo- to you're in a closed building. It could be I, that you yeah. get more sunlight and the sun is healthy for you. It could be a combination. Of oh, all well, those I think it is exposed yeah. to more sick I, people. I think it is all those things. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that it is, a, but I, I think it. That's why it's such a significant difference between those people and then the people that have jobs that are indoor, air conditioned all day long. Is there's several factors that would play into that person having a stronger immune system, more vitamin D, yada yada yeah. yada. Like so, absolutely, I right. think. It's fa- but it's just I'm connecting that dot right now as it's, we're talking about this environment about the plays sauna. a big factor. Yeah, and and how important this you know I I took this off of Wim Hof. He has this cool little uh, like how do you start training for this right? And it was a 30 day protocol where cold the cold shower. Yeah, the cold mm-hmm. shower, and you just do 15 seconds the first week. The second week is 30 seconds. Then then you go to uh, 45 seconds. Then you go to one minute. I've been trying that on the weekends. Yeah, and yeah. It, I mean, it's tough to upkeep it like like mentally, but like when I was consistent with that for two weeks, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I when I'm good about it, it is. I, I'll be the first to admit, like, man, when I get up first thing in the morning, I'm like half awake, I haven't had my coffee as it is. Like, <laughs> it's fuck, shocking. yeah, a, a freezing cold shower is is a tough one for me to bite the bullet. But fucking a, man, when I I feel amazing when I'm consistent about it. I really, I it really, raises really, testosterone yeah. too. But in it, the short term, do you guys know that cold wow. showers? Yeah, there you go. Yep, cold showers have been shown to raise testosterone. It's just, it's one, it's another weird because it kills my bone. It's another system of adaptation that our modern lifestyle has made weak, and uh, that's going to have some health detriment. That's just bottom line. The way now I look that at being it. said, I think there's something to argue that doing this intermittently may be more beneficial than just always being that person who sits in the sauna after every single workout too. Who knows? You know, that's a good question. I would like to see like them test it, you know, uh, do the benefits of consistency outweigh the benefits of adapting and de-adapting, right. you know, you know and uh, regressing uh, accordingly. I don't know, but uh, here's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see the effects of temperature contrast on cancer. Because I have hmm. a very strong uh, feeling in that temperature contrast is effective uh, at helping uh, treat cancer, if you, especially if you combine it with things like fasting um, and or you know a ketogenic diet type of protocol. I would love to see that. What's your theory on that? Well, I, I, again, because of the heat shock proteins, because of the growth hormone release, because mm-hmm. it's kind of a stress response. It may, and I think there's some evidence that it, it, it causes apoptosis in certain cells, which is what you want with mm-hmm. cancer. So I just like to see, because it seems to me that all these little type of stresses, when, you, when, when, they've, demonst- when they've used them on, with cancer, like fasting, they've had these positive effects. That's true. Versus yeah. if you make yourself super cushy and fed mm. and all this stuff, mm. cancer tends to proliferate, so... Yeah, that'd but be I don't an know. Interesting I still, I, I, I feel like my theory would be that it would still be smart to intermittently come in and out of it. It's like it seems like almost anything and everything that we adapt to, there seems to be a benefit to doing it for a while, letting taking a break, even if it's just a short right, right. short break, and then you're back out again, like training, right? Training, even training, you know, training. Right. Well, until it, it's measurable. And well, because it's switch because your body adapts to it, and and it's a stress if you will, you can overdo it for sure. Yeah. I could definitely see how you could like exercise, right? You could just do too many sauna sessions yeah. and then feel like shit. Yeah. 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 That's I, so I could, I could see, see I could see people doing that. And so I just caution, like, I think there's a lot of great stuff about the, what we're learning well, about I'm, this. So I'm getting, I'm going to try and get a sauna for my house. 
because that's how much well, we're trying to on here, of, man. Yeah, we're on here. That's man. well. I'm I'm gonna have one for my house too because I li- this is how big of a deal this is for me. Yeah, because I've noticed that much of a. Well, wait till you it. buy it because if that's the case, and I'm I was in the same boat. Like we're right. all in the same boat of purchasing one. If we can't get we'll someone get a to, good company to yeah you know, to wrap. Yeah, and, matter of fact, if you have a, uh, there's got to be somebody on the show that knows somebody. I know we've met a couple. And if we have one here in the studio, we will Ben Greenfield. I mean, we'll film it and stuff, and have professionals come and talk about it. So yeah, I want one. It's a free one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it. I like it. Yeah. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. All right, next up is M. Del Boccio. M. constantly has tight traps and upper back. Should he train these areas or leave them alone? It's actually a girl, Melissa, oh. I think her name. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No Melissa. problem. Although we're not going to assume. Well, the no, answer there's... will apply to both. <laughs> yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, you have tight traps and tight upper back. And so, you've probably been told to not work those areas I out. Just wanna, I just want to caution right away at you know diagnosing oneself with tight like, and really understanding what that means. And if. If that's exactly what it is, too, mm-hmm. uh, I think a lot. What do you of, think they mean by tight? Like, like when people say, and, "Well, to like them, yeah, stress. to them, they probably feel tight." You know, mm-hmm. but does that mean it's an overactive muscle? Does that mean it's an overtrained muscle? Does that, you know, is it? it are you holding is like it you responding said, responding with every movement? Yeah, so I think that's what I would see. That's where my thought process goes. Yeah. I think that that's what the case is because usually when people come to me, and be like, "Man, my traps are always tight." It's because not because they work them out too much and they're inflamed. They're disconnected or normally. Either either that or it's just uh, or they're relying on it. Too yeah, much. like they have poor recruitment patterns. Yeah. So they're so let's say for example the, the 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 muscles that depress the scapula or bring them down, and then ones that retract them or bring them back are weak or at least they're not firing the way they should. So what ends yeah. up happening is the upper traps take over. To stabilize the shoulder right. girdle when you do all your exercises. That's is, what I was thinking. Which is extremely common. Very yeah. common. Okay, so uh, that's upper. That's part of upper cross syndrome. And yeah. upper cross syndrome, they, I think the percentage is like 65 plus percent people suffer from upper cross syndrome. So you, there's a very good chance that that is the case, that it, it has something to do with your, you know, full. There's some sh- shoulder mobility that needs to be addressed. And yeah. we need to like really get into the priming before you do these movements uh, and, and see if that's the case. If it's just that it's over responding with every single movement, you know, we need to, we need to be able to relax that signal and, and be able to channel it appropriately. Well, so here's an here, easy, easy indicator right here is this is what maps prime prime is about in the, in there is a compass test, right? And this will right away will will point this out. So if, if this is what we're saying, when you do the overhead test, you won't be able to pass the test. You will be you you won't have the you won't have the connection and the right pathway. To, it'll demonstrate. It'll show that you have this issue. Yeah, yeah. you'll you'll know for and then it then it will then which point most you, people fail that part. Believe yeah, me. and then it will point you in a direction of movements that you should be doing, and that's what you should be doing instead of doing traps. Now instead here's of doing the, now here's the thing though. Thinking. Here's where I want to go with this conversation because I've heard this before, and here's the here's where I think we're going to talk about something that uh, a lot of people haven't heard before. So I've had people tell me, okay, I know I need to correct imbalances that are causing them to be tight. So like what Adam was saying, you identify, ooh, I have a poor recruitment pattern. That's why this muscle is overactive. So let me correct that imbalance, and then those muscles will no longer be overactive, which is yes, that's correct. But let's take it a step further. I've had people then ask me, well, should I not work those muscles out at all then because they're overactive? And here, and this is where, why my answer is going to be different from what you're going to hear mm-hmm. from most people. Mm-hmm. Most people will tell you don't work that muscle out. Most people will say don't train your traps then because you're just going to get them tighter. I would say train them the right way. And I, there yeah, you go. Exactly. I, I go in the opposite direction because overactive muscles uh, are, doesn't mean they're strong. It doesn't mean they're super strong and that you need to make them weaker. Yeah, that there's a miscon. There's too a, much frequency and in, in, in crossing of signals. That's it. There's there's a there's a you know uh, a lot of people have the wrong idea and they think if a muscle's tight, I shouldn't train it because then I'm going to make it tighter. 
because it's going to be stronger and right now it's super strong. That's not yeah. true. What what it is doing is it's just firing a little bit. So it's kind of in this constant state of like mild tonus all the time. But it doesn't mean it's strong. In fact, many times it's actually weak. It's actually a weak muscle. Right. It's just always in the so like Think of it like it's cramped up, right? That's it. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. So think of it like it's cramped up. And if, if you had like a cramp somewhere like that, you'd want to work it out. You wouldn't want to just- You might actually get benefit from doing shrugs. Full range of motion shrugs. Full range of motion, letting the shoulders drop and hang so you feel them stretching. Right. And then pulling all the way up and squeezing. Treating I wouldn't- them like a like a prime mover. Like, like it's the, the focus. And I wouldn't use heavy weight only I because you wanna, have bad connection. I do want to point out, though, here's the type of- When we give advice like this, right? Era. I feel like this is what this is why the our profession exists, though, because how you do that I think is really important. Yes, yeah. I think if you what I don't want someone like this to take away from this is like, oh, okay, so I should just keep training my traps, and then you go grab. And you they know, don't realize what their posture is. With, yes, as you, in biomechanics, and you go unit. and you go grab a weight yeah. like one hundred thirty five pounds. A bunch of short little reps. And, yeah, and, and you do these shrugs, and you just all you do is cement a poor right. uh, recruitment pattern already by by continuing the the bad posture. So. The posture is everything, right? How you how you position the body and how you take that muscle through its fullest range of motion. Uh, so here's how I teach this. So this is super common, and this is what I've had my clients do. So take light dumbbells. They have to be light because you already have a shitty connection to these muscles, and if you go heavy, you're just going to, like Adam says, cement this poor signal. So grab some light dumbbells, hold them at your sides like you're going to do shrugs. You want to stand tall, shoulders back, shrug up as hard as you can, as high as you can, and then let the shoulders drop. And then when they drop down, I want you to try and drop them down even more. I want mm -hmm. you to try and drive them down as much as possible. Uh, good cue. So exaggerate the range of motion. Pull up and then pull down and pull them down as far as you can. And do this real slow. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually move the muscle through a full range of motion. You'll get a better connection to it, but then you also have to correct the imbalance that's causing that. Otherwise, it's not going. It'll help temporarily. It's not going to be solved. The Logan Doherty. What, in your opinion, is the most important thing in starting a business? Capital, a business plan, or a good idea? I think that's so easy. You do you? Yeah. All right, you I, go first because I'm like uh, torn. Oh, good idea. Good idea first. Hundred percent good yeah. idea because you can easily start uh, a business without a business plan. Most yeah. of mine, I started that way. All, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, capital. Um, yeah, I've started multiple successful businesses that I had little to no money to get it going. Yeah. Uh, does it, but I mean, I, now that being said, those things become important later on. So I believe the, the bigger, the business that I've built or been a part of, yes. uh, the more size matters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The size of it, like you're not going to go, you're probably not going to go be able to build a $10 million business without a business plan and without some startup capital. Now you can, but it's yeah. less likely. It's like a but, lemonade stand. But yeah. no matter what, like none of it's possible without a good idea. You know, so, so you could have all the capital in the world, and you could have a, f a fucking um, a great business plan, but a shitty idea. So and you're not going anywhere. So here's why I'm I'm a little bit torn. Believe it or not, I'm a little bit torn hmm. because when we think of when they say starting a business, like what do you need? Capital, business plan, good idea. We instantly think of, or at least I do. I instantly think of successful companies like Apple and Google and. Those are obviously great, brilliant fucking ideas, but the vast majority of businesses that exist in America are not great yeah. ideas. They're just like a plumbing business that's yeah. successful. But even then, they weren't like an Apple wasn't Apple like forever. Like they were focused on something completely different well, in the beginning. Well, well so, my point, my point is, well, is that most businesses well, yeah, you, aren't the I'm original. Gonna, I'm going to ch challenge that way of thinking because let's use your plumber analogy. A plumber deciding to to start a business isn't necessarily a, a good business unless you were made to be an entrepreneur and do that. So it's still a good idea. Mm. So even though th to us, plumbing sounds like that's not a great idea, it's not revolution. That's revolutionary and good idea are different things. Some people- You it's, get in and innovate while you're in it. Some people, it is not a good idea for you to do your profession. For example, let's say you follow down the mind pump path, but let's say- you don't have a lot of the attributes that each of us have, it's probably not a good idea for you. Yeah. That's just bottom line. Do your for, own you, for you. But there maybe you, you maybe you. Split it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, to, to, are, so, are, so maybe do you mean good idea or do you mean like a passion behind what you're doing? Well, because when so I hear good idea, I, know, I think it, of like you need an idea. Uh, you know what I mean? What's like, most important in starting a, a new business is the mindset. Hmm. An idea. It's yeah. not even up there. It's not up there, but it should be. No, good, that's a good idea. So let me ask yeah. you. So okay. So let me ask you this. Let's say somebody has an idea. I'm not gonna say good idea because 
I'm, what I mean by that is they know what they want to do. They want to be a plumber, construction guy, whatever, average business. That's their idea. But they have no money to do it and they don't have a business plan. Or, or let's say they have a business plan but no money. Now let's flip it. Let's say someone has a shit ton of capital wait, 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 and they wait, have wait, a business well, plan. Let's, but just stop, let's like, stop right there. Let's just address that right there. So this is where people, I'll tell you something. This will hopefully help this person out. This is where people fail a lot of times. And this is why I say this is such an easy one for me and it's a good idea. It's because a lot of people have a very hard time being truly objective about themselves and really don't. Everybody thinks they got a good idea. Everybody thinks they, they can mm-hmm. build a business. Everyone thinks this or that. But it, but you know what? How about mm-hmm. disconnecting yourself and you saying accountability like, with that idea? Absolutely. You, and are you are you truly meant for that? Well, then of just because the- and that's why I, I, I want to stop you because you you said something and you've said this before. And I know I've, I've, we've talked about this before. Passion don't mean shit to me. Like in business, in business, passion don't mean shit to me because you know what? If you, if your idea fucking sucks and you have no business doing it, you could be passionate all you want about it. You could be excited about all you want about it. You could want it all you want, but you weren't made for it. Well, you ain't going to be good at it. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's the problem with it. The problem is in the, in how, how do you know it's a good idea? If you think it's a good idea, everybody who ever started a business thought it was a great idea. Right. Nobody started a business like this is going to well, fucking learn, fail. So, well, so, so hold on, hold on. So that's my, my, my point is the only objective, obje- the only thing that you can look at up there between capital, business plan, and good idea, the only two that are objective are business plan and capital. Like, you know when you have a lot of money yeah. and you know if you have a business plan. A good idea, who the fuck knows that? Right. Like, who, everybody thinks they have a good okay, idea. Okay, okay, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. I that's, got, that's the risk factor. Let me, let me give you, idea. yeah, I think with, and when, okay, let me ask so you guys here, this. here's the other thing. With the business idea, I think what they're, they think of it as being more formal. Right. Mm. So like everybody that's going to start a business should have some kind of a fucking idea of how this is all going to play out. You know, like how you're going to monetize, like when you're going to do that, like what what are the steps? What are the immediate things that you're going to accomplish? How are you going to market it? You know, like all these different facets of a business. You should know that shit. Mm -hmm. Like even if you don't write it down, you should know that. So that's like insanely important. Uh, Of those three, which one do you think between capital, business plan and good idea, which one do you think has caused uh, single handedly caused more businesses to fail like a lack of capital a lack of a business plan or capital. no good idea i would say lack of capital i think that's that, actually that, established they actually show statistically that that's what kills like the Most majority businesses. of businesses what's that lack of capital, lack of capital. like they run out of like money they run out of money yeah they I, didn't plan for it yeah that's um, part of the plan, though, right? Yeah, I think, I, I'm thinking I, long term. I but. still think it's a good idea. I think if you don't have a good idea to start with, and you have no business doing that, yeah. it's it doesn't matter. None of those other things. Those other things, I believe, are. I wrong. guess. I guess the only way for it you could to be know, dependent on long term versus short term success. I, 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 this is, the, the, this the, is the, okay. Listen, eighty percent of businesses <laughs> fail. Okay, eighty percent of businesses fail. True. Yeah. Okay. 80%. Most so, of that was capital. So you're already working. So <laughs> yeah. anybody out there right now that's listening and it's thinking about building a business, you are against odds right out the gates. Big time against odds. Yeah, you if are, I had to bet on you, I wouldn't. Yes, you are a mixed, <laughs> Even if I fucking liked you, I'm yeah. betting against you. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I am. Like, Just that's the odds. Well, that's why the Shark Tank are such assholes. You know? They know, they know you're going to fail. They so know they're not going to hit a I think a lot yeah. of people really fail to really dissect their business and break it all. It's simplified. So mind pump is an evolution of multiple pivots for me personally. When I when I started at this, I knew I saw where digital media was going, I saw the importance of social media and building a business, I saw how far behind uh, health and fitness was in this world. I saw the the people that were successful, how terrible they were, and I saw a huge opportunity. I had no fucking clue it was going to lead to an awesome team like this and in a podcast and sitting in a room like this. But I did I did see that fucking way long ago. Yeah. To the point where I I had multiple attempts at other things that I was doing, and so. Of course, I want. I mean, I I could have never even drawn this up, but I, I I started with the more simpler things, right? Like, okay, that that's the big problem is that all these issues, right? That fitness is behind, the wrong message is is getting out there. Social media is moving in this direction. A lot of fitness people don't see that, so I I see that. But I think a lot of people they right away want to they they want to uh, see they want to write the finished plan the business plan they want to here's my idea it's like no fool i'll tell you right now almost every successful business i've ever done was is what ended up being way different than the original yes. idea yeah, you and it. the ones that are most successful in business are, will tell you this 
Rarely ever does it does like an Apple have happened. See, those are rare. Apples, Google, those guys fucking got funding. Well, saw that like, even them they, they even pivoted created. so many times. Yeah, yeah just because right? they're in tech. So many mean times. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but I, you, you know what I mean, though. Yeah, is that it's the resiliency so, of the team and the mindset and being able to to uh, uh, you know completely change directions when you have to. Dude, yeah. you're preaching I, to the choir, dude. Yeah. You're I, talking to no, you know, I, I'm guys. Not, who are well, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to the audience right now. I'm talking to our audience right now. I know you guys know this. I'm talking to our fucking audience right now that need to understand this if you're asking business questions i'll tell you right now i've seen too much too many people suffer from paralysis by analysis trying to design their logo figure out the perfect this find get the raise the oh, right amount sure. of capital doing all and and all long while they get a stupid idea or their idea is going to get passed in two more months yeah. while they're fucking around trying to get to that idea so uh, that's why well, to if me you're, if you're so focused on that business plan the the only thing that's good for is to get money from the bank and if that's your entire goal, then yeah, there's step one. Have you but, guys ever written a business plan? Yes. Yeah, uh, and, and it's terrible. Like I it, hate it. it. It never, ever, ever looks like what it is on paper. It's pure speculation, pure like garbage that I fucking threw yeah. in the trash. I, here's what I'm projecting in three years. It's stupid. I guess the only it's to make everybody comfortable around you. But I guess the only real way, honestly, to be honest, to know if you have a good idea or not is if it succeeds. Because <laughs> if it I didn't, know. it was. A, I mean, <laughs> I guess you had bad ideas. <laughs> <you know? laughs> like, yeah. Hey, well, uh, that's but, about it. But here's how I look. This is how I look at it. And I, how I, when I like yeah. mentor people in this, I, I tell them that here's the deal about that idea for like years. 80% yeah, people, I mean. 80% of the people you're going to fail. Right. So my thinking is this, I'm trying to get through those ideas as fast as I possibly can. So I can get to the two, the 20% that are successful. Or <laughs> yeah. if, if you look at it as 10, I got to at 10 times, Volume, I'm going to, I'm going to fail eight times. I'm not going to fret that much is this going to be the one that provides a Dude, career for me for the rest of my life that's such a great number like your yeah, goal in life yeah. if you were playing the odds yeah fail eight the, times yes if you failed eight <laughs> times the, your odds are really good that you're going to come up on a success yeah. absolutely and i'll tell you right and now hurry up and get them over with for exactly yeah. good through, and i'll tell you what you go through you truly try and start eight businesses i have truly try and start eight different businesses you'll learn a fuck ton Oh yeah, a fuck ton. And oh, by yeah. the time you and you might get lucky, you might at four you put it all together. Maybe two. Maybe you're the guy who wrote the perfect. There's business no plan safe way to make money. Maybe you're the guy who wrote the perfect business plan, got a ton of capital, and you hit it yeah. out on the first one. But yeah. most people are going to go through a ton of. Can businesses. you guys even name something that's a safe play that you make money? Like you just make money. You know, I've I've thought about investing in like laundromats. Fuck, that's that not is crazy. not safe. I was, safe, saying, I was just yeah. gonna say yeah. that. Were you, you think really? so? Yeah. So laundromats and storage units. I thought are about parking lots. Low, yeah. 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 So those you know, oh, that's a, that's a great so, money cow. You know, right you know what the, there. That's yeah. what it sounds like, right? When yeah. you go into but it, then and the you management. Actually, and well, the people when you involved, break it down, yeah. the amount of money that you can actually make off a laundromat, each one is not that much. You have to own a lot of them, yeah, to make a lot of money, and then it's a lot of work and whatever because there's a lot of people electricity figured that shit out, right? Yeah, yeah, breaking equipment. All that shit. Yeah. That's true. And this is why, guess what? Okay, God, great point right there. And that goes back to my point of the understanding is your idea a good idea? Laundry, there's tons of laundromats that have proven to be successful, and there's guys that make money off of that. And it is a good idea. Problem is, already 10,000 people have already came up with that good idea yeah, before you. What are you going to do different? If you're hell bent on that good idea, okay, maybe you do have a good idea close me or close yeah. yourself on proving that your you're differentiating before factor. you even get to that. You know what I'm saying? That's like, and and let's pull, let's pull this into the, what our, our current world. And what I see a lot of right now on social media is so many people try and fake it till they make it. They Ooh. try and pretend like they got this business, you know, and put it out there on, on social media. Like they're, they're focusing a lot of motivational people yeah, as of late. They're focusing so hard on pretending like they're successful. <laughs> I'm Tony Robbins. That they're not putting the energy in actually being successful. And and to me, it's obvious as fuck. I always know who they are. Like they, they stand out like a sore thumb when you are you're trying to look more successful than you are. If you spent more time getting through the failures, you'd probably be more Dude, successful. I have a, I have a buddy who uh, rents out like Lamborghinis and Ferraris and shit. That's his business, right? So he owns these like super exotic cars. Oh wow! And he rents them out, and people will buy them to drive them for the day. Smart business, even and probably it's a growing business. It's a really. smart business. Yeah, insurance yeah, is, is the big Instagram. thing. Instagram. But, but here's what's funny. You know how many people he gets that rent these cars just to take pictures with them to post yeah. and use is like I'm so successful this is my Ferrari yeah. like they rent these fucking cars to do that <laughs> Well, all the time. Well, think about it. It makes so much sense because we, and that's why too, as much as we picked on shred, shreds at the yeah. beginning, 
I have a lot of respect for them, and by respect, I mean I, I, I respect the business sense for them to see the opportunity in the market. They were one of the first yeah. to, to really take advantage of it, like yeah. saw where the social media was going, especially like Instagram. They prayed off of saw everybody's- that nobody was, no supplement company, knowing that in, in fitness, we all know that supplements where all the millions of dollars are. Every, if you've been in fitness for longer than five years, you fucking know that. If yeah. not, you probably don't belong in business or in fitness. So you know that that's where the money is at. Sex and supplements. All of a sudden, you see Instagram and social media is exploding on this rise. Nobody's taking advantage of this. Oh my god, this yeah. is the new. This is the new marketing and advertising yeah. media medium. Mixing my pre workout in my helicopter. Oh, yeah. dude, <laughs> so brilliant. You know what I'm saying? We just cool factor it up pre-workout like crazy. Out in Pornhub, hot chicks with fake <laughs> asses, cool got cool kids with tattoos that are hip and pop, you know popular right now. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. smart as fuck. <laughs> that, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good. Idea. I don't know. Just it's gonna make you money. Justin said something in Pornhub. Yeah, I don't know where he came Pre- up with that. Pre workouts in Pornhub. That's shit. <laughs> that sounds fucked up, dude. Yeah. Drink this before you jack off. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> we could totally invent a supplement <sighs> oh, that oh people take God. before they. It's wow, probably gives it, extra it, stimulated. It's it gives, yeah, yeah, it's already out there. Yeah. I'm sure. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. All right, our next question is from Ray Ray Tone It Up. She's asking why all the decent guys she meets at the gym are in a relationship, yet she attracts plenty of attention from the creepy guys who <laughs> stare at her when she is doing her glute ham circuit. She wants to know if she's, and part of this question was she wants to know if she's doing something to invite the creepy mm. guys to talk to her. Well, yeah. so <laughs> let's let the wizards go first. What, what kind of clothes you wearing? Yeah, no. Uh, she said she no. In in, the, in there she says I don't wear anything revealing. Nothing I like don't. That. Yeah, she's yeah. basically saying like I'm not trying to draw attention. Yet these creepy dudes are attracted to me, and, and the dec- the decent guys in, are all in relationships. Well, I, even though I'm the, I'm not a fan of the book, I am going to use like law of attraction here because oh shit, it, I mean, and I and creepy I, I, girls attract I creepy them guys. On our no, Amazon. I'm not necessarily saying that she <laughs> is creepy, but I, I without knowing who this person is, I would venture to say she probably this is probably her mo. She probably attracts a lot of creep, creepy type of guys and the ones that she tends to lean towards or like are the well there's one common denominator in this all these scenarios hmm. you're that common denominator so it's not you you have to extract yourself from the creepy guy and the guys in relationships and start to reflect and ask yourself what is it that's drawing me to these people and what is it of me for me allowing these creeps i mean that's where you have to go. It's it's definitely something related to you and nothing related to the, those outside of you. And that's really tough for some people to do. And if you say it's not the way you dress, then maybe it's not. I don't know. I, I don't know. And the only person that really knows is you. But I would 100% what? tell you to reflect here. <laughs> it could be a few things. It could be where she's working out. I've been to gyms where there's just a bunch of douchebags. Yeah. It could so, also okay, be yeah, an yeah, yeah, environment. Wait, 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 wait. Stop right there. Okay, stop right there. Why? Okay, then you have to ask yourself. Why are you working? Why are you right? working out there? Yeah. Why are you working out there? It's yeah. all she can yeah. afford. Yeah. And, um, uh, I'm just kidding. Bullshit! Get the fuck out of maps anywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the creepy guys are bothering you that much. No, what I was going to say is like creepy guys. The reason mm-hmm. why they're creepy is they're the ones that tend to go and talk to girls while they're yeah. working out. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of self selection bias right there. Like if you take a poll of all Thank the guys you. that approach women yeah. while they're working out, the you're going to find a larger percentage of them uh, that are creepy versus non-creepy, and it's not going to be representative of the population. And then, of course, you have to ask yourself, what makes you say they're creepy? Like because yeah. they walk up and approach you. Like then you have to then if you again going back. Yeah, and, what made it creepy? Was it just they weren't good looking enough? Right, and yeah. then right. Is that, Ex- no, is that creepy. Exactly. Yeah. Like if, if it was the hot single yeah. guy who walked hey, over and I've said, "I've never seen wreck, would I've you never be okay seen with some that? handsome guy go up and be like, "Hey, girl," and they're like, "Ah, oh, god, you're so creepy." Ew. Yeah, Actually, yeah. the other they're just like, oh, so exactly. Keep so talking. You got. I, I mean, there's there's a lot of yeah. there's, like I said if this is all these s- s- situations are happening to you guys creepy guys guys in relationships 
again, there's one common no. denominator in all of this. I think I think if somebody like, good looking gives you a compliment, you're gonna yeah, be just, like, oh, <laughs> he's not creepy. <laughs> yeah, I th- I just you're be, gonna accept it. You know, creepy guy comes up. Look, put first of all, put headphones on. That sometimes helps because it looks like you're unapproachable. Yeah. So put the big ones over your ears and a baseball cap and don't make <laughs> eye contact. And I'll tell you why. And this is fucked up and it sounds like, oh, you know, you have to act a certain way. No, I've had to do this going and working out at gyms yeah. Yeah, because yeah. especially since starting Mind Pump and I'm a local person, I've been in this area since my whole life. So if I go to these corporate gyms, I get recognized many times by a lot of people. And if I don't feel like... I'm, you know, I'm. I have the energy to give people my attention, and I just have time to work out. I'll put my headphones on. I'll look down. I won't make eye contact, and people usually get the message that yeah. you know not to approach me. Also, when these guys, if someone's really bothering you and they're fucking assholes about, it, like, first of all, tell them. Yeah. Don't be afraid to tell them, and then go tell the people working the yeah, gym. Yeah, confront them. Yeah, yeah. Like, listen, you're really bothering me. I'm trying to get That's a workout. That's what I told. And then make sure you tell people in the gym. Yeah, because my wife, like, she'll work out without me at this gym and all this stuff. And so she'll sometimes bring that up. And I'm like, just be like, hey, what are you doing? Like, look at, like, following me. Because there's a guy, like, following her from, like, machine yeah. to machine. And, it can be intimidating. You, you know, got to put yourself. Some, there are some creeps for sure. So put yourself in their shoes. Like, imagine this right now. Imagine if you were in, like, a prison jail yeah. like a like a prison workout area and every dude in there was like way <laughs> bigger than you yeah. and looked mean as fuck and they were hungry and they were and one of them like they're following you around hungry like eyes you'd be threatened because you know he could fucking hold you down and do whatever he wanted yeah. to so i think for women a lot of times especially with creepy guys it's different like for me if a girl comes up and she's creepy i, I don't feel threatened right i could just tell her yeah. fuck off and i don't feel like she can hurt me but to women, I could see this being a little intimidating, especially in a gym. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, hundred percent. If you're in the if you're in the area, just rent mind pump. We'll come work out if with that, you. If <laughs> that nobody will talk we'll to you. We'll create an entourage. If yeah. that, I mean, if that, if it gets to that point where you're like, if I felt like I'm on a prison yard and I'm afraid, like I'm going to a different, <laughs> like yeah, it's time to, to cancel your membership. You know what I'm saying? Like, here's your sign, right? Yeah. Fucking a, like you should. <laughs> They're just lifting cement blocks. That, that, you, you don't need to ask a question on Mind Pump. You need to get the fuck out of there. Like, yeah. if, it, if it's that creepy and it's that I, scary, but in my experience, okay, yeah. in my they all got ex- teardrop tattoos. In my yeah. experience, with the, most women that have situations like this are are attracting this, and it they are looking whether they want to believe it or not, or look at themselves. And I'm totally not saying this is you because I didn't even look. I don't even know who this person is. I'm just answering the fucking question. And with my experience, that these these people these these ladies Wizard. that get this tend to Knowledge. they tend to be the ones. <laughs> stop it, you guys! Now it seems like I'm being a dick. Here. No, it's so, gone. These the, these women tend to be seeking attention, Maybe. and and they're Maybe. seeking the wrong. And then you have to ask yourself, why are you seeking the wrong attention? Is there something in your past that has driven you this direction, or he knows women. or? <laughs> Stupid dude, <laughs> <laughs> you make me lose my train of thought when you do that. Yeah. So I, I think it's this is all a self reflection thing for me, and even to the point, even if Sal is right with everything that he's giving, because I can totally respect that side too. You still got to ask yourself what the fuck you're doing there. Mm. Like if you don't like that feeling, it really bothers you that much. Then I would find another gym, and it's like, and I know, and you're probably a defensive person is going to say. Oh well, that's fucked up. So because I, there's creepy people, I have to just keep leaving gyms or like that. Well, it's like no, I, I I think there's a lot of strategies that you can put together, like Sal's offering, that would really not allow a lot of people to bother you. What and do you, stuff. What do you have you guys? Cause obviously, you guys have been in, in upper positions in in corporate gyms, like I have. And do you guys remember any times like a, a female member came to you and said to complain? Hey. Yeah, like hey, this dude over here. Oh yeah, has that happened to you guys? Lots yeah. of times. Mm-hmm. That's really? right, part of this part of this what, how did you guys handle that would you just talk, go talk to the guy yeah absolutely yeah yeah i would talk but i would i also it just would, puts her at ease more than anything yeah mm-hmm. i also notice patterns like I, this is what this is why i feel like i can speak to this is because that's happened to me a lot mm-hmm. i've sat in my office many a times with a female member who's telling me some creepy guy or whatever the case may be and i gotta go talk to the guy and stuff like that because that's my fucking job and my duty is to make sure she feels comfortable and safe right but it tends to be the same girl who comes in my yeah. office yeah, 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 to yeah. tell me well, about there's it. a pattern there yeah you gotta and, and, and more often, recognize and that's what i'm saying here yeah. is that more often than not there is a pattern here 
with with the, the same women or the same type of women that are coming up and having mm-hmm. this conversation. Now, this person could be a total one off and she could actually be feeling like she's in a prison and there's like she creep- keeps attracting the same yeah. creepy type guys. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. So it, it could be a, she could be the have exception you, to the rule. Now, have you guys ever worked out? I've experienced this before. Have you ever worked out in a gym and had a woman? Yes. Just fu- <laughs> yes. Adam. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> I, I want you to finish what you're saying. Every day. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I was just going to ask, like, has that ever happened? You were, because I had, <laughs> this has happened a couple times with me. And here's the thing as men, we are one, I don't care if you're, if you're going to deny this as a guy, you're a fucking liar. We always assume that a girl likes us. It's just our nature. Like, if a girl <laughs> smiles in our direction, <laughs> Or she's like, hey, she your just shoes looks un- at you like, yeah. oh, your like- shoes untied. You're like, oh yeah, she totally likes me. Oh my me. god, she's it, so into me. They've actually done studies on this and found that men tend to al- always think like in that particular direction. Well, we have to because we get fucking rejected all the time. And that's what they said. They think yeah. that the, the the theory is is that it's it's better off that we assume they like us mm-hmm. than not because we may miss that one opportunity when they do. So anyway, <laughs> so uh, so that's so, the, so that being said. I've had a few situations like that, but I don't know if it's like, is it it me that's thinking that or is that really what's happening? But one time was fucking obvious, dude. There were four racks available. I'm warming up in one of them because I'm going to do deadlifts or whatever in front of the rack. And this girl is literally, and this was like, after I'd done my warm up, I'd done some- I was going to make a bad joke there. Some priming. (laughs) She was following me around for sure. I thought, this girl's following, following me around. She even tried to talk to me for a second, but I was totally like, you know, leave me alone. So now I'm doing my my deadlifts, and she goes, "Do you mind if I uh, exercise? If I put my bar in front of you?" There's fucking four racks; they're all open. So she decides to do stiff legged deadlifts right in front of me, dude. Yeah, never has yeah, it been that on. obvious. Like she's come just, come on. And she and then she's looking. She looked back for a second, like, "Are you looking?" And like, <laughs> oh my "Are you fuck?" So uh, what I did was I completely, like, I completely yeah. ignored her. Had my chalk. I just did my lifts. Like she didn't exist. Well, I was oblivious Ooh, at first. Is yeah, one <laughs> this one lady like. Uh, like I was working out and I was, I was doing uh bench and this lady next to me, like she was on like the free motion and she's like, can you come help me with this? And like, you know, trying to like, um, <laughs> help me figure out like, like, what, you know, how to do the exercise. And like, Oh, okay. You know, she must know that I'm a trainer, you know, and I, I work here or whatever, but I was off, off, you know, I didn't have my uniform or anything. I was like, Oh sure. No problem. And so like, you know, I'm trying to help. She's like, well, where's it? Should I feel it? And this and that. And then she started moaning, is she was doing the exercise? She's like, ah, ah. I'm like and I was like, whoa! I've actually. Had <laughs> I was that. like, I gotta go back to my set. You know, I was like, I, had I a, didn't expect. I it. had a client that used to moan. Yeah, I, yeah, and I was fucking. It was obvious. It was ridiculous. Like the whole gym hurt. I got really embarrassed. I've been training for a long time. I know what a moan that yeah. you're lifting heavy weight sounds like, yeah. and I know what a fake moan no, it, sounds it, like. It sounded, yeah, it sounded like we were on a video. It was dressed up for yeah. sure. I, you know, there's so many times this this has happened <laughs> so that I actually count. at least well, a million, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that many, but yeah. enough to where I am actually Sweetie, the opposite of what you list? said right now. Is that I I assume they don't because. <laughs> there's nothing worse than misreading when you think that and that's happened enough times that I'm just like I don't ever want to feel that way again that feels it's like really that shitty. one time you thought we were famous well okay so I was, <laughs> oh gonna, my God. I was gonna share that story that's the best story yes. because that's a mind pump story right yes. so if you're a mind pump listener you'll enjoy that this happened what I think two years ago it was about two years ago when yeah. we first started uh really taking off right when we, when mind pump was just starting and we were you know, we we're. I was actually starting to get recognized when I was at places, especially if I was in a fitness place. And uh, we went to the, with Justin, Sal, and I, and Doug. We all were at the. This was like our first fitness convention that we went to. Which for sure, we're like, oh, if anyone's going to know us, it has to be here. It's a yeah. fitness convention. Yeah. Well, and they and we did. Yeah, we ran in, people. and we had just ran into like somebody. A fan ran up. Like we only been there like two minutes. A fan ran up to us, and like we took a picture with them and everything. And I was like, <laughs> oh shit! Wow. Okay, this is cool. And and you know that feeling. Of holy crap! Like we actually have grown to this size where we could be at a place like this and somebody recognize us. Yeah. So it wasn't, but like five minutes later, we're walking <laughs> through the, between the booths, and there's a booth full of like all these hot chicks, right? You know, all these little booths at these fitness, you know, uh, conventions. They got all these little girls in all the little short, you know, sports bras and cute booty shorts and shit. And there's like five or six of these little hotties, yeah. and they're all in front, and they're like, ah. They're all excited and stuff like that, and they and we're walking towards them, and they kind of make eye contact with us, and or I felt me probably at that time, yeah. and uh, you know they're all excited. Sorry, and stuff I like thought that. they were coming to me, and they come and they and they have they have their phone out, and they're like, "Can we take a picture?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course, right?" And so 
I think she wants to take a picture yeah. with us. He starts walking over like he's going to put his arm around them <laughs> yeah. in the group. <laughs> oh, my God. I was dying. I, I got she, my phone out. And, I took a and she hands me the phone yeah. to take a picture of her. <laughs> so, take her and her friends. Yeah, yeah, to take her and her friends. And, oh, here. Yeah, yeah it, was, like, oh, uh, it was pretty epic. So yeah. it was a super humbling experience. I laughed. That was my favorite. I swear to God, every day I laughed one time about that for yeah. at least six months. It was yeah. great. Right? I just thought about you walking up and like, can I take a picture? Like, Because Adam, Adam looked like, sure. Adam actually yeah. looks at me and Justin yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, of course, right? <laughs> yeah. Takes it, and then they're like, no, they're so take a picture me. of us, motherfucker. They're so into me. It was so great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but I I think women are, I think women are worse than men because I think they're more extreme, right? So I think women are either really uh, super subtle to where you're not sure or quiet oh, or, or super out- or, or very outward. Yeah. Like, I think guys are like all in the, all between, There's right? Just, yeah. A little They'll try more spectrum. A, a guy yeah. is like this, like he's going to have 10 different tactics. He's going to yeah. try, I'm going to be aggressive <laughs> this time. Let's see if that works. I'm yeah. going to say something totally outlandish. And then this time I'm going to uh, try the friend I'm angle. going to spill water all over myself. Yeah. yeah. Dudes have get like some attention. Yeah. Dudes will try everything to get attention. Right? <laughs> I've done that. Where women, I find you're either like super conservative. And even if you're attracted to me or not, you're not going to ever lead that lead on to that especially may at a place where i'm working right and then you have the other extreme who's just like i'm gonna say what the fuck i'm thinking <laughs> and it's like whoa i wasn't ready for that so i feel like with women it was always a very I, big extreme for me i got my ass fully like groped like grabbed <laughs> and not just like pinched but like like underneath and everything is that the one that used to drop bombs in your gym no this oh. was this <laughs> was this was a at least at least 80 year old woman at the grocery oh, store oh wow at the grocery so store so you had to let it happen she was reaching uh, for something just a little old lady at least 80 just adorable and she's reaching up and she's kind of shaking with her hand because she can't, you know, reach up that high. So I said, Oh, can I help you? What would you like? And she goes, Oh, I want, you know, that thing up there. So I reach up to grab it and she like with her little shaky hand, dig, 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 right up in my butt. <laughs> Shut up. I swear to God, dude. That's like, so awesome. And I fucking, and I went, I like clenched, you know, how you like, I, my arm came, and I went, Hada! and I turned around and I looked at her and she giggled a little bit. Oh, and you know what my God. response to her was? Nice grab. No, yeah. my response to her was like, you're naughty. <laughs> you're a naughty and she, lady. And she got giggled and I walked like, away. Ah. Like, I was kind of like, yeah. I wasn't Dude, 100% offended. I will be that creepy uh, old yeah, guy violated. for sure. 100% I'll be that creepy because you can get away with it when you're that old, bro. Oh, when you're that old, they're like, oh, he's senile. Yeah. Or, oh, how cute. He doesn't know what he's doing. Or, oh, yeah, how yeah. cute. He thinks that we're close in age. Or like, whatever. You're they basically think- admitting you're going to be a total <laughs> fucking creep at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come here, girl. We knew that was going to happen. <laughs> anyway, yeah. good times. Yeah. Hey, listen, we drop a brand new fitness video every single day on YouTube. We have a channel, Mind Pump TV. It is awesome. It's as awesome as our podcast. Oh, if it's you're a not great on it, channel. If you're not on it, don't undersell it. You so. are missing out. Yeah. Also, if you'd like to ask us a question that we answer on one of these episodes, the place to do it is on Instagram. Our page is Mind Pump Media, or you can find our personal pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.